at the Rebuilding Center. We're talking to Mark Lakeman, co-founder of City Repair. How are you doing today? I'm doing just great, Katie. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. So you're a co-founder of City Repair. Um, what is City Repair? How did you come about finding that company? Well, uh, City Repair is a group of people. You might call us a community. Uh, you might call us a group of activists, but really we're just people that live in Portland. And we've decided that if there are things that are going on in our city that, that we want to change or that we want to improve, that uh, we'd like to practice a little democracy in order to make the world, our world, this city where we live, a better place. The idea of repairing a city or making a place, you know, a better, a, a better environment within which to live, uh, if, if anyone's going to do that, it's got to be us, doing it for ourselves. Why is the Rebuilding Center so special? Well, the Rebuilding Center is made by the community. And I, I think it gets da down to a really fundamental question. Um, who builds community? It's got to be the community. So one reason why the Rebuilding Center is so special is because people in the community decided that there were things that could be happening in the city that weren't happening, and they wanted to undertake a new direction. Let's talk about where we're sitting right now. This is just not plaster, right? It's all very special. What, what exactly is it? Well, this project is, is like a lot of things that City Repair is involved in, in the sense that it's as ecological and sustainable um, as, as humanly possible in every single dimension that you can possibly consider. So the material of this space that we're sitting in is literally earth. It's, it's from right here. It's the clay under our feet. So you don't have to pollute in order to go get material to bring it to the site to build with. You simply excavate and build with what's here. And it turns out that it's also non-toxic. So the impact of working this with, with this material is not only that it has a very low environmental footprint upon the earth, it also doesn't poison us or hurt us. And it's also so, so low tech that children are actually here building this space. For instance, the texture on these columns that look like trees behind me, they're made with spoon marks, spoons from the pizza parlor across the street, but in many more ways than that. For instance, it was the community that decided how this would look how it would work. Like, from an urban design point of view, it was the community that said, we need a gathering space off of the flow of, of movement, off of the flow of traffic. So they said, we value sustainability, we value democracy, we value an economy of sharing of ideas and materials and time and space. And so this embodies the sustainable culture that we all keep talking about, and yet we don't know what it looks like. I think this is what it looks like. It looks like creative participation. It looks like people having fun. It looks like people making new friends as they create places. Sustainable culture for city repair sake is where we take back our lives, our time, our space, and we re-express in the material around us the inherent human values um, that we share just by being people. So that you know, really, repairing the city means re-engaging and creating places like this that don't just reflect us, but that actually facilitate us coming together. The building itself is made out of all recycled materials. It's lit by the light that comes down from the sky, doesn't require electrical lighting. So it's really fabulous in the way that it reflects the values of the people that live and work here. Um, it, it just simply reflects their priorities, which you know, they prioritize community, they prioritize tomorrow, they prioritize their kids, that's sustainability. This is just one prime example, but also you have Share It Square, which is another example of what you've done. Let's talk about Share It Square a little bit. What exactly was that project all about? Well, Share It Square is about 10 years old, and it began in about 19, in 1996. It was the second project that we did, and we've now done something over 100 of them throughout the whole city. But it was the second one, and it was the first time that a neighborhood looked at the whole fabric of the community and realized that it did not reflect participation. One of the really interesting comments that came up in those early discussions, somebody said, um, you know, what, what do we mean when we talk about the good old days? Because 
people not knowing each other or people, you know, streets being dominated by automobile traffic, those aren't the good, that's not, that doesn't characterize my sense of the good old days. What were they? We started to talk about uh, villages. Like, there was a time when we all lived in villages. Um, how long ago was that? What was life like at that, at that point? And in that conversation, we learned that it's in the intersection of the village where you find the public square. It's not off to the side. It's right there where our lives flow together and intersect, literally. And just by intersecting, we say, hello, what's your name? We start to tell stories and community builds itself. So we said, okay, zoning laws that we never had a say in make us leave where we live to go work among people we don't tend to get to know. We come back at the end of the day to come live among people we don't tend to get to know. And that doesn't, that's not how human culture was built. We lived and we worked together. Sherrod Square came from people realizing all that stuff together as a place-based community and saying, whatever, like, we're done with that. And they, they got upset. But rather than just getting mad, they got creative. And they said, we're going to take that intersection right there in the middle of where we all live, and we're going to turn it into a place that brings people together. We're going to paint the street with vibrant colors. We're going to locate all these interactive features on all the corners and turn it into a little village heart. All the little pieces will be kind of like your, kind of like starting a garden with seeds or sprouts, and the things will grow over time as we feed them, you know, energy and attention. What else do you have going on right now? What other projects are you guys working on? Well, the biggest, the biggest thing that we do every year happens at the end of May. It's called the Village Building Convergence. Kind of like Sherrod Square began alone to do this thing that they were imagining and designing and funding together. Now there's 30 communities doing it all at once. So let's say that I want to get my community involved and I want to go talk to my neighbors. How, sh how would I go about starting that and getting everyone rallied together? How, is that, how does that work? Okay, if you, wanna, if you want to change the world, you can certainly do it by yourself as a small community or you can call and ask for help. And uh, so you could call City Repair, call us at 503-235-8946 and just say, hey, I have an idea, who can I talk to? And definitely there will be people. And our job is to listen, figure out what it is you want to do, and then find the support, find the energy and the resources to really help you to do things for yourself. Um, you can go to cityrepair.org on the internet. Uh, let's see, you could email hindi at cityrepair.org as well and just say, hey, this is what we have going on. What do you, what do you think? What would you suggest? So we're, we really are a crossroads uh, in a way of trying to bring people with ideas together with people that have resources and want to support these initiatives. So that, that's, that's you know, one thing you can do is to contact us. Let's see, the last, the last thing I would like to say is I'd, I'd, like, I'd like to just point out that the idea of repairing the city is not just an external thing. Everyone could use more friends. Everyone could use a little self-improvement. So I, I think besides that, I'd just like to say that everyone is certainly invited to, to come and create with us. There will be people coming from across the country and even the oceans to share in this experience. And the people who are going to be speaking will be some of the, the most inspiring and creative people on the planet Earth. And we can all use a little bit of their inspiration and take it away with us back to our neighborhoods. Well, it sounds great. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'll be there. Um, but thank you so much for your time, Mark. Really appreciate it. It's great what you're doing. I'm really excited about it. And I'm Katie Wood with Sustainable Today, bringing you the tools today to make you more sustainable.